So now we're talking uh, with Dustin Walsh from Automotive News, uh, talking about um, great news that come out of Mexico. We usually hear really bad news about that, but it seems that the automotive industry keeps bringing big news from Mexico. How are you, Dustin? Good, how are you? Great, thank you. So I just saw your report uh, on uh, Automotive News about uh, Mexico's auto boom, which is also a boom for the U.S. Uh, suppliers, a U.S. company. So it's a Really great to see that kind of uh, approach because a lot of uh, times some people will, will say, okay, Mexico or China or India is taking out jobs out of the U.S., but this is helping both countries, right, and both industries in both sides of the border. Yes, I mean, I suppose it would depend on uh, how you look at it, but it's absolutely a net benefit to Mexico for sure, and for the United States, it's a um, um, it's become the kind of the place to be if you're in the manufacturing space, especially if you're a lower tiered supplier. So uh, one of the great advantages, I mean, there are several, but one of the main advantages in Mexico is obviously like lower salaries. But uh, something interesting that I saw in your article too is like uh, eventually Mexico will gonna have to catch up because like otherwise they will keep losing talent, like will just come here or go somewhere else. And that's, that's pretty interesting to hear too. Yeah, I mean, a lot of it, yes, obviously labor costs is a huge net benefit uh, for, for uh, companies to be established in Mexico. Um, the costs are significantly lower than here in the U.S. and, and elsewhere, such as Canada. Um, but but it's also the free trade agreements. Uh, you know, the free trade agreements down there provide um, great export uh, opportunities for companies located there. Um, and, and yeah, as you as you'd mentioned, um, when we're looking at uh, program managers, some of the higher skilled workforce, um, those are needed in Mexico. And because there's so few of them, the, the, the pay isn't as always as low as you would think it would be. Um, it may cost more in some cases to employ a program manager or something else down there than it would be in the United States. But uh, and what, know, what we're seeing is... Yeah, why would that be? Uh, why would that cost more to have it there than here? Few, few, fewer people skilled enough to do it there. Um, you know, where Metro Detroit specifically, we have, you know, um, plenty of, of engineers. We need more as well, but we have a lot of engineers. We have a lot of program managers. We have a lot of plant managers. Uh, Mexico workers uh, skilled to do that position or trained to do that position are fewer and far between. Um, so they can, uh, just by the laws of economics, can dictate a higher price. Yeah. And also I would say that uh, what I was referring to at the beginning, I mean, there are like uh, some safety issues in Mexico still that uh, it doesn't seem to affect this, I mean, the overall operation of car manufacturers and suppliers down there, but like to the individual, like going and, and living there, maybe it's like another story, right? Yeah, I mean, it just depends. Yes, obviously, you know, um, Mexico has a, a, a plethora of issues uh, between, you know, the cartel issue that still exists, the violence issue that still exists, um, some other economic issues that still exist, but um, those are trumped by um, the overall ability to produce uh, a large amount of cars uh, with a with a strong low-skilled la uh, labor workforce um, and a growing high-skilled labor workforce. Uh, to really make it uh, really attractive for manufacturers, and especially the ability to export um, with far fewer costs and, and, and repercussions um, than maybe other countries. Yeah, so uh, it's very interesting to see like almost every, I'm not going to say every week, but like every few months at least, a new manufacturer announces like new plans to, to build in Mexico. I believe the latest was Toyota, right? I mean, and Mexico has become like number, I mean, pretty in the top five maybe of uh, car manufacturers in the whole world? It, it will be. Um, it's, it's really close to that now. And, and if they if the projections continue, they, they will definitely be in the top five uh, manufacturers of automobiles in the world. Um, you know, and a lot of that has to do with the supply chain down there. Um, it's, you know, it, it, for years it's always been kind of the German uh, OEMs, the German automakers, and, and everyone else locating down there. Um, obviously, uh, most of it is exported. 70% um, of that export goes to the United States. Elsewhere, you know, other, other exports go to, to Asia and things like that. Um, but, but really what's happening is we're seeing the, the smaller suppliers, the logistics, the, um, uh, the, other, the other areas of the supply chain, they're starting to bulk up down there, uh, which provides an opportunity for a lot of U.S. companies to, to locate down there as well as other transplants from around the world. Yeah. So how big is that like secondary tier uh, industry uh, in Mexico? I mean, how, is there like a value at, attached to it, like in terms of, of dollars or like, I don't know how to measure that. Yeah, I, I don't have that information exactly how, how what it's worth or what it, what, what the size of that is. But you have to imagine for, um, you know, for, for every automaker, they have roughly, you know, a thousand to two thousand suppliers. Um, and, and if it's going to be a sustainable industry down there, as all indications are pointing to, you're going to look at that number of suppliers 
locating down there. Uh, and those in, in here in the United States, especially in Southeast Michigan, the supply base employs far more than the automakers themselves. Yeah. Um, so that's a huge growth opportunity for Mexico as far as employment base goes. Yeah. So uh, the other issue that some people maybe still have is like the quality of the actual product. But I think that has been solved, right? I mean, like, I mean, Volkswagen is, has yeah. been making cars right. there for... Yeah, because because of the free trade agreement with NAFTA, you know, uh, the North American Free Trade Agreement, um, cars, you know, we're, we're 20 years into NAFTA, um, so a lot of automakers located down there 20 years ago, um, are, you know, so so what we're seeing is is they've been down there and the the and because it's so close to the United States, um, those and and again it's it's a lot of U.S. companies, it's a lot of German companies, a lot of Japanese companies, they've brought their their quality regiment with them um, and it's much easier to build on opposed to some place like say China where manufacturing still manufacturing a very high quality expensive product is still relatively new to them where Mexico it's 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 been in the making for 20 years um, so you're seeing the quality is, is is you know relatively on par with what you're seeing in, in the, the more advanced uh, manufacturing countries yeah and since you are be, uh, located in Detroit uh, what's the general feeling in the industry what to what I was saying before like seeing companies like moving down their production to Mexico and Detroit is still I, I guess suffering from like financial uh, crisis there like the recession and all that uh, so what's the general feeling in the industry about Mexico in Detroit well you know the automotive industry really since 2010 here in Southeast Michigan has been on a huge upswing um, you know it recovered faster than any other industry and yes the city of Detroit the metro region still has its own financial um, and, and infrastructure issues uh, but the industry itself is, is likely the healthiest it's ever been um, yeah the employment numbers are, will never be the same as they were because of uh, advancements in automation advancements in productivity and just different different ways of doing business um, but I think the sense for Mexico I mean yes if you're if you're a UAW worker maybe you don't really like Mexico because there are jobs that are being located there yeah um, but if you're running the business or if you're an investor in these businesses um, Mexico's a very attractive option and, and I don't think anyone would bat an eye at, at uh, being down there um, you know you talk to suppliers they know they need to be down there you know it's a global industry yeah um, if you're not in Mexico you're, you're behind everyone else at this point Yeah, and in the same sense, I mean, like, uh, a lot of manufacturers are building plants in the south here in the United States with no unions and all that, so that's another, I mean, it's all more or less the same, as you say, we're global, like, the border, like, maybe say it's Mexico, but in those terms, it's a little bit, like, the same, right? In terms of not having unions right. and, like, more benefits for the manufacturers. Right, I mean, what you used to see is you used to see a lot of manufacturers go on the border, you know, right next to the border or, or right on, you know, right in Texas on the other side of the border to kind of, Um, circumvent any issues, and now you're seeing them kind of go down, you know, whether it's Puebla, whether it's Celaya, um, you know, they're locating down there because that's where the manufacturers are. Um, you know, they, they do obviously a, a site assessment, they figure out how many workers they need, can those workers be produced in that region, so now you're seeing them, you know, go into Mexico with less fear than maybe they had 10, 15, 20 years ago. Yeah, and that's the case of one company in particular you're talking about in your article, Hollingsworth Logistics, which uh, they're going to be investing about, what, $400 million dollars in the next few years? Well, the, yeah, the, the revenue is $400 million. Oh, the revenue. To, the goal is to have a quarter of that, so $100 million dollars by 2020, 2025, uh, coming from Mexico, um, a country they currently don't do business in. Um, and, and they know that, you know, listen, for us to, to, for us to have any sort of growth potential outside of you know, this region, we need to be in Mexico, you know, and that and Mexico for a lot of companies is a, is, a, is a jumping board into other areas. You know, they go to Mexico and then they can open up shop in Brazil or, or maybe they can make the expansion over into Europe. Um, it's really kind of a jumping board to international business um, in general for a lot of these smaller companies, these sub-billion dollar companies that exist here in Michigan and, and across the United States. Yeah, and uh, what, uh, what does this company do? Uh, just logistics or they produce any any kind of product or anything? So, yeah, so, so what happens with a lot of these companies, and you're seeing a lot more, especially in the minority side, minority-owned business side, is you're seeing them, they do they do kind of an offshoot where maybe they are a logistics company um, or, or trucking, transportation, you know, various areas in that in the supply chain. And, what, and there's opportunities for them to do assembly work. So it's usually you can hire low-skilled workers and, you know, you're not making the parts, but you're putting them together. Uh, which is a far less, uh, you know, um, far less uh, intensive thing to do, but it's a need that the automakers and, supply and large suppliers have. Uh, so the, these companies kind of can make that step into into kind of the the lower grade of manufacturing um, relatively 
easy, and that provides some good opportunity to expand in other countries. That's great. We're talking with Dustin Walsh from the Automotive News, uh, talking about how the, the boom in Mexico for the auto industry. And, and again, Dustin, I'm originally from Mexico. I've been here in the States for more than 26 years now, here, in, well, in Miami at least. I don't know if you, thought, if you count that as the United States. But uh, uh, so it's great to see good news coming out of Mexico. And again, I, I think the automotive industry is like number one in that. I, I, I see a lot of good things coming out from auto automotive industry from Mexico. So thank you for, for reporting this. Uh, no problem. Thank you. Thank you very much. And so you, the, the website, people can access it, just like automotivenews.com, right? It's free to the public, and we can, they can go and read all the yeah, articles? Yeah, you can go to automotive, automotive, auto, autonews.com, or you can go to creamsdetroitbusiness.com, which is where I, I, I report as well. Um, and, and, you know, I cover the supply base, uh, you know, the manufacturing industry, specifically automotive. Excellent. Thank you very much again for your time, and uh, good luck. Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting.